Welcome to the world of sharp wit and southern charm, where the 1986 television series Designing Women unfolds the tales of four dynamic women navigating life, love, and business in Atlanta, Georgia. With its unique blend of humor and social commentary, the show gained a devoted fan base during its run. Reflecting on this classic sitcom, one might ask, out of the many roles in Designing Women, which one was your favorite? Each character, from the feisty Julia Sugarbaker to the eccentric Suzanne Sugarbaker, brought a distinct flavor to the screen, leaving viewers with a myriad of memorable moments. Now, think back. Do you have a cherished memory associated with Designing Women? Whether it's a hearty laugh at one of Mary Joss dating misadventures or a poignant moment from a powerful Julia Sugarbaker monologue, this series has left an indelible mark on many. As we delve into the random facts about the show, did you know that the series was created by Linda Bloodworth Tomason, who drew inspiration from her own Southern upbringing? The authentic portrayal of Southern culture, combined with the strong female characters, contributed to the show's lasting impact. Before we continue, we're curious. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to designing women? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now let's uncover more intriguing tidbits about the show, offering a glimpse behind the scenes and highlighting its cultural significance. Designing women became a cultural touchstone, addressing issues of the day with humor and poignancy. Its legacy endures, making it a must-watch for fans of classic television. So let's celebrate the enduring charm and wit of designing women and share our fondest memories. Your stories are the fabric of the fan community, weaving a rich tapestry of shared experiences. Designing Women, a classic television series from 1986, emerged as a groundbreaking comedy that effortlessly blended sharp wit with social commentary. Created by Linda Bloodworth Tomason, the show revolves around an Atlanta-based interior design firm run by four distinct women, each with their unique personalities. Julia Sugarbaker, the outspoken and principled matriarch, leads the ensemble, complemented by her confident and glamorous sister Suzanne, the pragmatic Mary Jo, and the sweet-natured Charlene. Their firm, Sugarbaker and Associates, not only tackles design challenges, but also becomes a platform for addressing pertinent social issues, marking a departure from conventional sitcom norms. The series gained acclaim for its bold storytelling, tackling topics such as feminism, politics, and cultural shifts. The strong, diverse female characters and their genuine camaraderie resonated with audiences, propelling designing women into the cultural zeitgeist. The show's unique blend of humor and substance left an enduring impact, paving the way for future TV series that dared to explore social issues within the framework of comedy. Charlene's roots in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, aren't just a casual mention in Designing Women. They tie back to the show's creator, Linda Bloodworth Tomason, who hails from the same birthplace. This subtle connection adds a personal touch to the series. Moving beyond characters, the show's iconic setting, Sugar Baker and Associates' interior design is portrayed by the Villa Mar, a Victorian mansion in Little Rock, Arkansas, built in 1881. The historical significance of this location, listed in the National Registry of Historic Places, adds a unique backdrop to the unfolding stories. Notably, the casting of Delta Burke as one of the stars faced skepticism from CBS due to her beauty queen background despite her prior TV experience. This decision, however, proved to be pivotal, showcasing the show's commitment to diverse casting and challenging conventional norms. These behind-the-scenes elements contribute to the rich tapestry of designing women, weaving together personal connections, historical settings, and casting decisions that played a role in shaping this groundbreaking series. In the early 80s, Dixie Carter and Delta Burke shared the screen in Filthy Rich, a dynastitalist spoof, under the guidance of executive producer Linda Bloodworth Thomason. Their collaboration planted the seed for a future project, and true to Thompson's promise, Designing Women emerged in 1986. The chemistry between Carter and Burke, forged in Filthy Rich, played a pivotal role in shaping the dynamic among the four women running Sugarbaker and Associates. This connection, bridging past and present collaborations, adds a layer of depth to the series, showcasing the enduring impact of creative partnerships in television. Carter and Burke's reunion in a 22 Family Law episode further underscored the lasting professional bond forged during their earlier collaboration. 
The trajectory from filthy rich to designing women and beyond not only highlights the interconnectedness of the entertainment industry, but also emphasizes the lasting impact of collaborative relationships between key players. This behind-the-scenes insight enriches the narrative tapestry of designing women, showcasing the series as a product of enduring creative alliances. Amidst the success and acclaim, designing women faced its share of challenges, shaping the course of the series. In its inaugural season, CBS shuffled the show's time slot, bouncing it between Monday, Thursday, and Sunday, causing a dip in ratings. The threat of cancellation loomed, but the dedication of viewers for quality television supporters persuaded the network to keep it afloat. As the ensemble cast navigated the tumultuous early seasons, a significant departure marked the end of an era. Gene Smart, who portrayed the lovable Charlene, chose to exit the series, citing fatigue from the role and a desire to prioritize her family. Smart bid farewell in the impactful two-part episode The Big Desk, watched by over 30 million viewers. Amidst these shifts, the series also witnessed the participation of Jan Hooks and SNL alum. While her stint on Designing Women lasted two years, Hooks faced an unfortunate career trajectory post the show. Tina Fey lamented Hook's unrealized potential, emphasizing the stark contrast between her talent and the opportunities she received. These behind-the-scenes developments underscore the complex journey of designing women, where scheduling woes, cast departures, and unrealized potentials played pivotal roles. In the realm of 80s television, the show's resilience against network decisions and the bittersweet departure of a beloved character contributed to its lasting legacy. In the realm of accolades for the 1986 TV series Designing Women, notable Emmy nominations went to Delta Burke, Meshach Taylor, and Alice Ghostley. The recognition, however, was confined to these three cast members, highlighting their standout performances in a show that deftly blended humor and social commentary. While the series faced challenges during its early years, including scheduling shifts and cast departures, the enduring impact of Designing Women resonates beyond its original run. Fast forward to recent times, and the prospect of a reboot emerges. In September, following a candid op-ed by the show's creator, Linda Thomason, in The Hollywood Reporter, ABC expressed keen interest in reviving the series. The commitment to a new script signifies a potential resurgence, with key cast members such as Gene Smart and Annie Potts signaling their willingness to join the project. Behind the scenes, a fascinating chapter unfolded in the relationship dynamics among the cast. Delta Burke, central to the series' success, experienced a falling out with her co-stars. However, over a decade later, a private apology from Burke to the cast members, coupled with a public reconciliation with Dixie Carter in 22, paved the way for Renew with camaraderie. The subsequent reunions in 2003 and 26 showcased a harmonious bond, even in the face of personal loss, as the cast mourned the passing of Dixie Carter. As the series inches towards a potential revival, the Emmy nods, the cast dynamics, and the intriguing behind-the-scenes developments all contribute to the layered narrative of designing women. The show's legacy, marked by its resilience, social commentary, and enduring relationships, stands as a testament to its significance in the landscape of television. As we wrap up this journey down the memory lane of a certain iconic television series, I encourage you to take a moment and delve into your personal connection with the vibrant world of these unforgettable characters. The Designing Women was more than just a show. It became a cultural touchstone, a reflection of an era, and a source of inspiration for many. Now it's your turn to share the spotlight. What are your fondest memories of the characters and their escapades? How did the series resonate with your own experiences? Feel free to drop your thoughts, musings, or anecdotes in the comments below. Let's turn this space into a virtual living room where we can all share our stories and celebrate the timeless charm of designing women. Whether it's the sharp wit of Julia Sugarbaker, the comedic brilliance of Suzanne Sugarbaker, or the undeniable charisma of the entire cast, your reflections add to the rich tapestry of collective nostalgia. Your words become a testament to the lasting impact that transcends screens and spans generations. Thank you for joining us on this trip down memory lane. Your time and interest are truly appreciated. Now, let the reminiscing begin and let the conversations flow. Until next time, keep those memories alive and keep the spirit of designing women alive in your hearts.